You are listening to Get Real Podcast. All right. It is Rocktober, and Dan and I are not in the fishbowl. As you can tell, we are sitting in um, Park Circle, North Charleston, is it, Dan? Yeah, the Park Circle area. All the hipsters hang out here, and they've got music and grub. and. Yeah, we fit in perfectly, don't we? Yeah, I don't know if we're that hip. <laughs> maybe we are, and we don't know. I think we are just so hip. We are beyond hip, is, maybe, is maybe what it is. Maybe hipsters look at us, and we're so out of sync that we think they think whoa those guys are like vintage retro we're like i don't think so <laughs> i think we're redef- redefining hip today so it this is actually we're hip replacement, hip replacement. No. <laughs> we're not quite that far. here we are yeah the the, the <laughs> hip replacements here uh, this is the latest we've ever done a uh, podcast edition yeah when you were like yeah i think they started like 10 and it goes until two i was like feeling my age there for a little while no i don't know it's cool it's actually really kind of a neat vibe down here it is it is we are in about an hour gonna see our friend ziggy from soul creed here in north charleston now soul creed was a band that i came in contact with through our friends harry and mel oh yeah from filthy rags uh during the extreme tour and they are another one of those bands that's right down the street from us. It's amazing the good music that we have right here in our own backyard. You know what's cool? Soul Creed is a cool name. And I don't like all band names. Some of them are like, I mean, Filthy Rags is awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of different ones that really hit it. And then there's some that it's like, okay, that's cool. And it doesn't matter that much if you got great music. But Ziggy is a cool name. Too. What is he, a guitar player, vocalist? He is the rhythm guitar player and the vocalist. Yeah. Okay, yeah. See, with a name like Ziggy, you got to you gotta become the front man, right? <laughs> you got to be. be. Ziggy, oh, he's the, um, the sound guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I was just in there a little while ago. And guess who's running the sound for the opening acts? Who? Ziggy. <laughs> so he is oh. the sound guy for the first two okay. acts well, tonight. a jack of all trades. He That's is. commendable. So. He is. He is. I, I really think our listeners are going to like Soul Creed because they've got that classic southern rock vibe to them. Cool. I, I, I think you're really going to like them, Dan. Cool. Uh, it's going to be a great, great show. But what I'm trying like, to bring my daughter, but it's 21, 21 only. 21 only. Most of the, you know, a lot of places give you the little stamp and no booze for use, you know, yeah. sort of stamp. And uh, But I don't know. She didn't. She didn't cry for that long. She didn't blame you. That, no, no, she, was, she was cool. She went and hung out with her sister. That Glenn, I'll tell you what. She loves live music. If live music is out there, she's got great taste in music. So uh, Here again, we are uh, blowing in the doors of Gnosticism. And I, that we are. We're yeah. going out to a bar late at night. To listen to a Christian band. Yeah. Now, do they consider that, like, what it, you know, we've oh, yeah. talked about this before. Are they Christians that play music, or are they like, no, we're a Christian band? Oh, they're, they're just, they are a Christian band. They okay. make no bones about it. When you take a look at their website, they have their, their mission statement is to spread the gospel through their music. So That's cool. It's really cool. There's no bones about it. It's really kind of cool. You know, it's funny because you hear a lot of people say, well, you know, you shouldn't go into a bar. And that was okay for Jesus to do that. But for you to do that is, is not a good thing. I remember sitting in a men's group at another church and they were talking about how if they saw a pastor so-and-so in a bar, they'd go in and get him out. Well, Jesus spent a lot of time in bars ministering to the lost and the hurting. And guess what? That's where the lost and the hurting are. You Uh know, Hmm. that's where they're at. So, but yeah, blowing in the doors of Gnosticism, going to a bar to listen to a Christian band, I love it. There's a lot of freedom, you know, and it's not like we're going to go in and get drunk either, you know. That, yeah, that, that's no. not what we're going for. We're going for something totally different. So it's going to be a cool, cool experience. So, Dan, what have you been reading lately? Well, I do, and you know this about me, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of time to sit in a nook with some cozy chamomile and, and <laughs> read, so I do a lot of listening. I, the only thing that I don't like about listening as much as I do about um, actual reading is my retention of vocabulary and spelling. Something about picture, seeing the words on the page yeah. does help for my retention. I don't know if you're the same way, but I really do enjoy listening and you and i have we've loved radio talk radio and and being on the radio terrestrially um was was a lot of fun and doing podcasts a lot of fun so people get to listen so um i've been listening to a lot of stuff lately i don't have a problem listening to people that i somewhat disagree with but i just feel like I used to when I was really young in the faith, I'm like, no, they're not on our team, right. you know. And if they didn't line up perfectly, now it's like, no, you, you've after you've been through a few hard knocks, 
church splits. Hey, after you, after you realize that we didn't line up perfectly most of the time, too. <laughs> I don't line up with myself last year. No, you know, we're not talking about doctrinal instability, but we're talking about just, you know, you you get weathered and, and disappointed and and you just start looking at things and um, in a very not when I say open minded I don't mean like in a liberal like some quintessential right. like I'm a liberal but you start looking through and I'm so thankful I will answer your question in my okay own we're getting ADD there way. <laughs> we're getting there but I'm going through Kansas um, in Albuquerque on <laughs> the famous left turn the left turn and so when um, it's like your doctrine starts getting really proved out and we are in a very precarious age when it comes to the enemy sidelining you making you ineffectual or getting you downcast and what the bible i guess would call shipwrecked in the faith yeah. you know and it's i think it's interesting the ploys to do that and it's usually always with the corruption of works and legalism and that christ is less than divine less than god and that um sin is not that bad and the blood is not enough and hey how about some works just add a little works and it's usually those things but i do i'm looking forward to doing the podcast with you about against word of faith oh that's coming up real and soon yes I, we've talked about how that spoils the child a lot of exciting things what i've been reading and listening to lately um i've really been enjoying there's a book written by john MacArthur, pastor in california very faithful pastor gets a lot of criticism because he doesn't pull any punches He's not an arrogant jerk. There's, he's a very loving, kind man. Doctrinally, I don't agree with every jot and tittle of what he puts out, mm -hmm. but I love the man. You, you know, like you, you sit there and you listen and you feel, after I listen to him, and it can be quite dialectic, he'll go through doctrine and it's just, he's, he's brilliant. And homiletically, there's not a whole lot of overkill, a whole lot of, you know, uh, He's not Muhammad Ali in the ring. He, right? doesn't, he doesn't get really he, heady with it. He simple. doesn't. He just simple in a beautiful, just lays it out, but no nonsense. It's very so, sober in the sense that he's got the suit, he's got this, but you don't feel that weird religious vibe at all. Mm -hmm. And I lean very far towards the Calvinistic side of things doctrinally. I just, and part of it is because the teachers and preachers that I listen to that are Calvinistic. I feel like worshiping after I'm done hearing him. So I listen to a lot of John MacArthur. And like I say, I'm, I'm not eye to eye with him doctrinally on a lot of things. We could have long talks about him. I love the man. After I hear him, I'm like, oh, dear Lord, I want to worship. Well, he wrote a book, and it's called The Gospel According to God. And you and I have been sharing some books lately. Yeah. Um, that book, I, I want to say, Glenn, I've probably listened to it eight times maybe five maybe ten i don't remember but it I'd say more than five um and it's basically showing the gospel in isaiah 53 and going very very deep dive into it and you come out just cherishing christ you come out with a huge burden for for jews yeah. that reject jesus as the messiah you understand they even brought up and you and i have talked about this that um in most synagogues around the world, they, I don't think it's written down, but it's most of them forbid the reading. It's the forbidden book. Of Isaiah 53, because yeah. when you read it, there ain't, I mean, maybe it's because our eyes are open, you know, we're spiritually alive to God, but I read it and go, how could you not just bow down and go, Oh, Lord, we missed you. Oh, because it talks about how they were going to respond to him. So I'd encourage our listeners, read Isaiah 53. Everything in the gospel is in in the book yeah. of Isaiah and in Isaiah 53. You know, I'm glad you bring up Isaiah 53 because there was a point that I wanted to make when we had Simeon in the studio the other day about really understanding who Jesus was and who he is. And when you take a look at Isaiah 53, it talks about him not having a comely appearance at yeah. all, that he wasn't one that would be desired. So he's the total opposite of the white Anglo-Saxon guy with the wavy the wavy hair and everything like that that we've come to picture. He was a rough, probably a rough-looking dude. 
um, based upon what he did, and the scripture supports that. He he's not he wasn't the prosperity preacher back then yeah, with the the blazing white teeth, the blazing white the, teeth, and the nice cloth, and, and the. This is Victoria Gloria Triumphantina, my wife. <laughs> they have some like over the top name. Something is that just serendipitous, or do they like they have a school for them? You know, I gonna... think they changed. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know how they do it, but it's this. It's so Triumphantina. I Triumphantina. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> like you meet my wife and they have like just, uh, Victoria because she's victorious. Yeah. That's the uh, Gloria. Gloria. Yeah, kind of, we totally recommend for our listeners uh, Lutheran satire. Oh, great! Love that. Great guy. videos and on YouTube. I'm not, look, I love Luther. I'm, I'm not a Lutheran, and there's a lot of things that I'm like, oh, I don't know. I could look into that, but I love them as brothers. They have Orthodox yeah. doctrine. A good um, and when uh, <laughs> did you watch the one? Where it's like these two, I don't know, what do they call those animation, like the cheesy animation characters that have the computer-generated voices? Oh, you know, yeah, you I know, I know what YouTube. you're talking about, Anyways, yeah. So he's got these two computer-animated um, characters, and they'd be like, so, for our false religion, what would you like to name or rename uh, Linda, um, the the mother of Jesus? And the guy's like, Mary. <laughs> and then he goes, okay, what would you want to name Susan Magdalene for our new false religion? He's like, Mary. Okay. I can't. <laughs> so what they're basically doing, they're just showing that if you were writing your quintessential script for a false religion to put out there, would you have like 19 Marys up in there? <laughs> Which, I mean, it was, the, the man is so good. And I'm not, the, the timing, the monotone, the cheesy animation, mix all of those aspects together. And for my weird sense of humor, I mean, it's like, oh. you, you'll spew whatever you're drinking. Well, we're going to go in and check out Soul Creed, and we're going to do an interview with them after the show and check this out so for all of our listeners we will be back dan you got one last I thing have to say? A teaser tidbit okay teaser tidbit here we go if any of y'all when you're reading the account of genesis and you see where after god did all this work of creation it's weird to think you don't think a god would like overalls on and a lunchbox you know work it's kind of weird <laughs> hard hat. and then even more weirder than that when i first even heard it as a child and they said and then god rested from all the work that he had done that really struck me as, I was like, he ain't breathing heavy. No. It's not that. What does this mean? And Glenn and I are kind of going to explore some, yes. some, I don't know, some murky depths of yes, that. Yes, we are. And it's fun because it's not something, we don't go around and try to collect these things. We really don't. No. We just, I mean, some, we see something that's weird and then we're just praying and then all of a sudden we're like, God, I'm curious about that. And then I, we have a few, few interesting things about the sabbath we do and we rest. do and rest and rest yes a lot of really neat things coming up and for our listeners and for the people that are just uh becoming aware of the get real podcast what you're basically listening to is dan and glenn kind of falling in love with christ again yeah and that's no, really what's well that's really what's happening if you listen to a lot of our earlier podcasts and go like oh i mean i think god used some of them in whatever way but yeah. if you hear like this guy sounds we were going through some stuff yeah and we got out of a cult we did a, a lot of di different things and lord is really um doing a special work of restoration yeah. and i feel so thankful like we were saying before of being able to dodge getting out of anything to do with the word of faith, mm -hmm. getting out of seeing Gnosticism for yes. what it is, yes. being able to dodge um, the religiosity of some of the other like uh, formal denominations. Yeah. Now, we don't have, you know, there's a lot of brothers we agree with, but there's certain churches you can go in and something's just wrong in the traditions of men and the, the group think. So we've been able to dodge that in a lot of different ways and I'm like really excited and we failed a lot too and we were wondering why we failed so often at our ministry attempts and now when we look back it's like oh wow wait a minute we were being oh, preserved oh man if we if we had been like successful in quotes whatever that means you know does that yeah. mean you end up in a dungeon means you, you have know? a wife named Victoria or Gloria <laughs> Or victorious, <laughs> triumphant, wait, triumphantina. Wait, wait, go, <laughs> what would be another one if you're like a huge? If you put your, you know, my thing. I do have a challenge. There's one last, maybe saving grace for the word of faith movement 
faith movement and there's like 500 double entendre a triple there's entendre there there's irony there because i'm using that facetiously obviously but you know what they could redeem themselves if their doctrine really is logos Mm -hmm. just move away from houston or dallas two of the most prosperous places on the planet (laughs) in the history of the world so why would you want to not it's it's the hospitals for the sick i thought right that's right so let's see haiti Mm -hmm. okay they could move to haiti i would hate them to do that really yeah don't want to they can calcutta calcutta Mm -hmm. somalia Mm -hmm. there's a few places that i think could need some of that uh thing but yeah if you want to be a little god and speak things into existence yeah 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 let's see how go knock yourself out down there well we will we will be back momentarily with our friends from soul creed and some awesome tracks from them rock on people get real we'll be soon back Out here live, Dan and I just took in Soul Creed at the mill in North Charleston, and it is early in the morning. It it's is. like it's like one o'clock, and I'm it still is. awake. We have Ziggy here with us. Hey, how you doing, guys? And Ziggy, who else do we have with us here tonight? Well, next to me is my brother Jay. Uh, he's the bass player, and uh, we have a friend here from Nashville, Tennessee. Drove eight hours to come and play with us tonight. His name is Tim Denner. That is dedication, Tim. That's awesome. <laughs> How, how did how did you find these guys, or how did they find you, Tim? Uh, we got connected through a mutual friend named Lang Bliss. He's a really good guy. All right, in Tennessee, you guys uh, just uh, did some stuff in Nashville. Well, it actually started. The story starts back in 2016. Uh, to be honest, uh, just wanted to thank a bunch of uh, industry folks for the volunteer uh, opportunity that they gave to us at a thing called the Extreme Tour Objective. Uh, and uh, Billy Smiley is the producer that responded to me. He said, hey, if you guys want to do it right, this is what you do, you know. And, um, you know, it's a lot of money out there in Nashville. So we're like, yeah, we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, a year goes by just about, and then uh, he emails me out of the blue and says, hey, I hadn't heard back from you guys. You guys, you know, still want to do something I'd like to work with you so you know I, I really took that as like okay the Lord's opening that door because since when does a Nashville producer who's won you know yeah, he's got a couple dubs and, yeah and and uh, you know the guy that was you know the founder in the rock and white heart you know uh sent you know he called me so <laughs> that's a <laughs> twist of of uh things and so yeah so we went and started working with him last year we did uh some song choices and we wrote songs together and we put songs together from what we've had and then last fall we ended up uh as far as the, the money that we had available we ended up doing three of them that's awesome and i just picked up the album tonight and uh, we're going to share hold on with our listeners so they can they can hear that we've got listeners all over the world which is exciting get you exposed to them now here's the question that i really want to ask that i'm dying to ask is that you guys currently are do, uh, leading worship services yes we are at the citadel for the core of cadets there so tonight you were rocking it out here at the mill and then you go and you do worship what's what are some of the similarities and what are some of the differences between what you did here tonight and what you do in a worship service well normally in a worship service we uh choose songs that people know you know all these songs we did tonight are originals and hopefully people will know them soon (laughs) you know i mean there are people that do but uh these are uh popular christian uh worship songs that you know people hear on the radio or, or have known in the church for years and uh we just want to lead people in into the throne room of god and that's you know also a call on my life as it is on the bands as well uh and uh so so far it seems like god is really working through it a comment i stepped in a mud puddle that's great (laughs) um it's really neat everybody that i've interacted with uh that's had anything to do with the the extreme tour 
there's been just gold in it as far as the hearts and just the commitment and I could I could just hear through the way they were playing tonight and the attitudes and it's just I don't know it's a blessing I, I love being able to interact with these guys so. Tim has connections with the Extreme Tour as well he uh, was a part of the tour in 2012 and he's got several friends uh, one is Angelo hey Angelo if you're here in this podcast Angelo Gonzalez who's one of the main leaders on the tour when they go out so one last question for you. I was reading the lyrics to the to the song "Take Me Farther" uh, about it. It just seemed to fall in place, but then it all blew up in my face. Uh, that's the story of Dan and I's life. <laughs> okay, when we think it all all together, what inspired that song? What what led to the lyrics of that song? Well, Billy and I were working on, like we said, a few songs when we were in Nashville. He had this chorus and this this you know little you know he had the chorus words and lyrics and uh he gave it to me and he said zig i just want you to write this about your experience on this whole journey with with music and ministry and it's i mean it's been really an up and down thing for almost 30 years now it's just you know you mean you don't have the mansion yet <laughs> no. <laughs> it's in heaven i don't know how big it's gonna be but <laughs> But yeah, so it's you know a bunch of starts and stops over my life, you know, uh, with with music when it seemed like things were you know coming together, then it felt like the rug was pulled out from you know from under me, and circumstances in life would happen, or just you know uh, God's timing was different, you know, so you know things like that were a major factor and, and like in the bridge it says i trust your plan though i don't understand it because sometimes we just don't understand what god is doing or where he's taking us or why he does what he does but we just have to that's where the faith comes in it's like you got to have faith with god you know his ways are higher than ours so <laughs> was there any time where that was scary <laughs> I, I i see your brother over here shaking his head so i'm gonna move the microphone this way yeah uh half the time it is scary because it seems like you know what God's doing and your idea of where you should be going. It's like uh, this is kind of moving away from where I expected we were going to be going. But you know, it, it's it's not our timing; it's God's timing, and it's perfect. And most of the time, thank God, when it happens, God's plan. When that like happens in front of your face, it's like, oh well. Okay, now I understand it. And I'll tell you, it's scary sometimes when you're going into the, you know, the uh, areas where there's, you know, crime and drugs and you're doing ministry and, you know, you're surrounded by, you know, you know people that are kind of wondering, what are you guys doing here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, you never know how people are going to react. One time we had you know, a couple of extreme tour f- folks almost get, you know, attacked by some, uh, you know, kids that, you know, and it wasn't because they did anything to them it was because the spiritual atmosphere in that in that area was changed for, for a time where god was wanting to move in people's lives in the moment that the show was over you know we'll say and then uh, you know it was i mean they just literally packed up everything and then um you know the enemy wanted his territory back so he wow. was you know letting us know he wasn't happy wow. with what we were doing there it's really interesting i mean that's kind of a pervasive theme over the last few years with us just things don't turn out the way that you think they're going to and it's like you learn about god's kingdom and a lot of times in in hindsight i'm sure they they could have similar testimonies but we you and i were kind of perusing our own failures and just Multiple. dead ends and over and over again and then in hindsight we look back and it's like whoa i'm glad doctrinally i didn't set in settle into that camp whoa that was the wrong thing (laughs) and you just go back and you see it and it's amazing but i guess overarching and we could probably do a podcast about this but you think about just in the kingdom in general how odd from the very beginning it's almost like god is not threatened by the enemy our lives are so brief he loves us so much that it's like he allows just crazy stuff from the beginning of the early church just it looks like chaos and disorder but it was just victory it's almost like defeating an enemy just being like real casual about it i'm just ending you but i'm gonna do it so uh, humiliatingly or something that so it gives me some solace when i think about the suffering and i look i'm like this is a pain i wish it would work (laughs) but i love when he said uh in the mansion uh in heaven that's good theology right there i like that very good theology So for our listeners, where can they get some Soul Creed merch? How can they support you guys? Well, you can get Soul Creed merch basically by 
first of all, come into a show. <laughs> uh, just look at our uh, calendar on Reverb Nation. Uh, there's going to be, you know, shows always uh, popping up. In fact, our next local show is uh, Sunday, November 10th at the Coastal Carolina Fair. Nice. 7 p.m. Um, you can also, you know, purchase anywhere you find music online and, you know, where you've we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, uh, you know, all those all those re- retail outlets that you know people usually f- find music on. So if you want to stream or even download a track or, you know, buy all of them. You know. <laughs> buy all of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's three of them right now, but there's there will be more here in hopefully the near future, the next you know, few months. Guys, thank so, you so much. For our listeners, uh, this is Hold On by Soul Creed. Everybody, rock on.
lithoscry.com